Hi guys, today we will talk about which MacBook Pro is suitable for your needs if you are a Mac user and decide to upgrade this year. So watch the video before you buy. Apple has made the same design changes to the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pro. As a result, both have gained a large screen. Even the 16-inch has seen a slight increase. It's now 16.2 inches. To achieve this bigger screen, Apple reduced the bezels around the display. But it's also made one design change that will probably be the most notable, at least when the screen is turned on. Apple has given the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pro a notch. The notch is probably going to attract some criticism, just like the notch on the iPhone has. Apple has designed the software around it though, so it will appear to be built into the menu at the top of your screen, rather than biting into the project you are working on. The next design change will be apparent if you look down at the keyboard. There is no touch bar. The touch bar is a feature that Apple brought to the MacBook Pro back in 2016. In my opinion, the touch bar was a failed concept and Apple learned from their mistakes. In fact, I feel that this whole MacBook design, bringing back the ports is a love letter to the MacBook fans screaming about it since 2016. And it shows that Apple actually listened for once. Well, let's start off with the pixel count, since that's an obvious difference between the two sizes of the MacBook Pro. On the 16 inch, we have 7.7 .7 million pixels. On the 14 inch, we have 5.9 million pixels. The new displays both offer up to 1000 nits sustained on full screen brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness, up from the 500 nits brightness in the previous cases. They are both excellent for color critical work and can actually display true HDR content. You'll be able to connect up to two Pro Display XDRs with the M1 Pro, or three Pro Display XDRs and a 4K TV with the M1 Max. We also get ProMotion 120 Hertz for the first time on a Mac, and this is one of the reasons I'm getting one this year. Now, this is the tricky part if you're not familiar with CPU and GPU workloads. It's easy to overpay for performance that you might never use. So my advice is to first be clear about your most demanding workload. For example, if you are a software developer, CPU performance is way more important to you than GPU performance, while a 3D designer would want to spend more money on the GPU. This sounds so simple, but you would be very surprised how many people make these buy-in mistakes. For the average consumer, just browsing the web and consuming content, the MacBook Air M1 with 8GB of RAM is perfect for that and can even do more like video editing, some 4K footage. Don't buy last year MacBook Pro M1. It's the worst value across the board. For the price, it's better to get the 14-inch with so many more benefits. So it's either you get the MacBook Air M1 or the new MacBook Pros. If you're doing content creation workflows, then going with the M1 Pro 8-core, 14-core GPU is more than enough. If you want more performance for editing 8K videos, then the M1 Max is more suitable with its dual media engine for ProRes RAW and HEVC. If you are doing any intensive graphic work or 3D rendering, the M1 Max 24-core GPU is more than enough and will last you a long time. It's actually the one I'm getting to. Of course, if you want the best of the best, the 32 core GPU is the one to get for an extra $200. Same as the M1 last year, the RAM is not your typical PC RAM. It's unified memory, which means that you will not need so much of it to do the same task as the regular RAM. We already know this from the M1 benchmarks. Besides, this year, the unified memory is a way faster LPDDR5 and the SSDs are also faster with up to 7.4 gigabit per second, which will translate to better performance with SSD caching if your RAM is full. When it comes to RAM capacity, I highly recommend 16 gigabyte for most workflows. 
if you want to future proof a little bit then go for the 32 gigabyte especially if you want to do a lot of multitasking with heavy programs like after effects or logic pro 64 gigabyte in my opinion is overkill unless you can justify it like for instance if you are a game developer keep in mind that this is unified memory so it will also be used as gpu vram the more graphic intense work you do the more of the unified memory you'll be using when it comes to storage i would recommend one terabyte for most people if you don't need that much then save 200 dollars and get the 512 gigabyte both macbooks come with a uhs2 sd card reader and thunderbolt 4 so you can just add some external usb-c drive and edit or work directly from them if you need to there is one last area where the 16 inch macbook pro does outshine the 14 inch model that's battery life obviously because the 16 inch macbook pro is larger it can be equipped with a bigger battery we're talking 21 hours video playback instead of 17 hours on the 14 inch model also remember to get the 96 watt adapter for 20 bucks extra if you are selecting the m1 pro with 8 core cpu on the 14 inch macbook pro otherwise you will not get fast charging i already put this in consideration in my recommendation list so now you will see a list of models i recommend depending on your workflow So that's it guys if you have more questions please leave them in the comments below i will be making another bias guide for windows laptop users who want to switch to the mac this year if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content thanks for watching see you in the next one